these videos that I've shown you, um, we have that there's these various stats, but let's break down a little bit more the anatomy of a, of a YouTube channel, uh, and then we'll create our own version, um, most likely next time, uh, to capitalize on reaching more people. So the first, the first thing is that uh, on YouTube, channel. So that's the optimal word. You have profiles or pages on other networks. Here they call it a channel. It's the same thing. It's just called a channel. But obviously you want to say, visit my YouTube channel. It's such a faux pas to say, visit my YouTube account. Channel is the proper word. YouTube channel uh, can be for a person or a company. Uh, so similar to the other networks in that you can have a, a personal account or a business account. YouTube channel can be for a person or a company. Uh, and as always, they're free to set up. So the tip that I said earlier, um, that I've said previously for any of these networks, uh, uh, complete the channel as much as possible before trying to get followers. Actually, they're not followers on YouTube. They are subscribers. So different name for the same thing. On Twitter, I have 100 followers. On Facebook, I have a number of followers or likes or whatever. On YouTube, they're called subscribers because it's a channel, like a TV channel. So I've got a channel. I've got people that subscribe to the channel. And like I've said for other networks, uh, you want to set up the basic aspects of your profile, your channel, before trying to get followers, subscribers. So I'm going to look at the anatomy of, of, a, of a YouTube channel here. This one was brought to my attention, so we'll use it as an example. Uh, there was a video here, how to be Italian. 20 rules, Italians never break. So uh, Marco, in a box, is talking about being Italian, and uh, the video is... Uh, seven, uh, eight minutes long, basically. And he goes on talking about Italy and such. So he's got 1.6 million views on that video, 41,000 thumbs up and uh, 1,000 thumbs down. Comments, 5,000 comments. Uh, so breaking down further the anatomy of a video, you see there's a, there's a box, there's an area below the video. Uh, the name of the account and then below it he wrote some text and it says show more so every video has a spot for a description use this for search optimization we'll, we'll do it in detail when we get to that part but uh, this is a place for you to use it for search optimization. If you've taken my other classes, like search engine optimization class, this should make sense. Uh, but perhaps, what do, you, what do you think I mean by this? Uh, what am I trying to say with search optimization, maybe? Keywords, exactly. Relevant keywords and phrases. Here. So here, let's see what he wrote. Italian stereotypes, well, some of them are true, especially when it comes to Italy's social etiquette. Here's a list of unwritten rules Italians must respect at all times. I can do show more, and there's even more to look at. But on the very beginning here, okay, keyword Italian, uh, keyword Italy, keyword social etiquette, keyword rules. So it's not just a list of, of words. It is full phrases, uh, readable phrases that have the keywords sprinkled in. So someone might be searching for, you know, Italian rules. So there's the, there's the, there's the keyword of it, Italian and the keyword of rules. Someone might be searching for Italian etiquette. They don't have to be in that order, Italian etiquette. They've got etiquette there, they've got Italian there. It's in the description. It should be found. 
So that's what I'm saying about this description. Phrases with keywords. So best is to write complete sentences. with keywords. You can write as much as you want, but be aware not everything is visible at first view. When I went to this video, it's showing me some amount of text and then it says show more right there if I, if you're looking at it this far away and you don't have much experience do you even notice that that it says show more i think that doesn't even look like a button i don't think it's that obvious especially for beginners that don't use youtube a lot uh, i don't think that's too obvious that there's show more so there's approximately three lines of text that appear right away before they're cut off. If I show more, then there's a lot. How to date an Italian video. He's promoting another one of his videos. 60 Italian hand gestures, another video. From Italian food to fashion, going through cheek kissing, pasta cooking, and coffee making. And look at all of these other keywords that he put in there too. I hope this video will help you plan your next visit to Italy. More keywords. Just because they're not visible doesn't mean they're not relevant. I'm just saying that people that never think to click on that are going to miss all of those other keywords. But maybe they're not important for them to view. But the search algorithm will find them. Join the, join the box. Please subscribe. So a link to himself to subscribe to the channel. Links to his other social networks. He's on YouTube, he's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And he's saying here, he used a Canon EOS 70D camera and he edited an iMovie. Music was this. So he's actually then got a link to uh, the music and then other copyrights. So that, that box, that uh, area of uh, description is very powerful. The point of all of this, again, this area will be tremendously helpful in getting found. You have unlimited space full of keywords, phrases, whatever you want. Notice what you're also doing in here. You can place active links here. You can link to your website. You can link to other videos. You can link to some other social network. Uh, you can link anywhere you want in this area. See that? I can, before I click to show more, there was a link there. Following that, where does it go? I went back to his main YouTube channel to subscribe. That could be linking anywhere. Out of curiosity, in this case we can see who has clicked on that link. He put that link back on April 2016 and he's had these amount of clicks. He's had 3,000 links on that click. Here's a super secret trick. Let me reveal the super secret trick. Um, some links, especially bit.ly links, let you do this. In, in that this is a link pointing somewhere, and he designed it at bit.ly.com. Bit.ly has the ability where if you, instead of um, simply clicking on the link, if you, if you paste it into your web browser, and add a plus sign at the end. You can actually spy on people's traffic on that link. Not really, really spy. You just see what uh, what number of clicks they got. That's all we have yes. So I'll put it in here. Secret tip. The 
you can view traffic stats on a bit.ly link if you add plus at the end. So that click goes to site. But that plus sign shows you stats. So simply adding the plus sign, don't click on the link if you're curious. Copy the link, paste it, put the plus sign, and then that will show you uh, traffic. What you do with that, well, then, you know what? Well, it's interesting, but you see it's been decreasing in this amount of time. He's got a million views. He's got a million views on that video, but only 3,000 clicks on the link. So this is just again to show you. You have to be active. You have to keep keep uh, putting out content because just because you got a viral hit of 1 million views doesn't mean you're going to get results. What if that link was over to buy a product? Only 3,000 clicks. Yeah, I would love 3,000 clicks, but that, that came from a million view viral video. So if I've got a video with only 20 views, I'll have maybe one or zero sales. So that's why you've got to be active on social media. Yes. So can you just at the end of that three lines just put in the website in the active link so they click on the website and you can't do this kind of tracking? And how do you get around letting people track or anything like that? Well, because he's using a bitly link, it has that kind of built-in tracking. If he had put in it actually if he had put in, you know, http.marcobox.com, uh, he'd have to set up some other way, such as Google Analytics. So he's basically doing that to get his own analytics and he doesn't care that other people. I guess we know that other people see that. So. Yeah, I don't know. I, either does it or doesn't care. Yeah, this is not a lot of people really know that. So I. I don't think he knows that. Most people don't know that, unless you're really into social media and SEO and all of that. And even if he knows it and doesn't care, well, okay, people know that three, he got 3,000 clicks, but what's kind of the value of that? You don't, you don't really, where did the clicks come from? How long did they stay on the site? Well, that's not, you don't get any of that info. If I've got a Bitly account, I can view my stats and see all of those details. Where did the traffic come from and such? But me spying on someone else's bit.ly traffic, I, that's all I see there. Might just be good for competitive analysis. You know, oh, sure. Yeah, one way is I'm, I'm trying to make a video. So I look at other people's videos, and then I kind of see the traffic and see, is it going to be a good idea to make a video of this kind or not? Competitor analysis. Okay, so um, Marco in a box was the one that uploaded this video. There's a little check mark next to it, it means verified. Well, I I'm sorry to tell you that there's a lot of spam on the internet nowadays, even YouTube. So when something is hot, when something goes viral, suddenly a lot of spammers come out of the woodwork doing their own version. I don't doubt then after this one got popular, then a bunch of other accounts started to make their own version. How to be Italian. 20 rules you must never break. You know, changing one word slightly. Or even brazenly using the exact same title. That's allowed. You can't really copyright the title of a YouTube video. So this little verified check mark was that he went through a process to verify that he is the original creator of this content. And if I'm if someone tells me there's this great funny video go look it up how to be Italian well when I uh, when I look at the, the results I get 16 million results which is the right one well this one's verified this one's not this one's verified but the topic is different um, no verification no verification so that Well, like I said, it's verifying that Marco in a Box is the official representative of that entity. They created this account, and they're the official Marco. Another account may create an account called Marco in a Box. They could totally. Uh, names right here are, are like on Twitter, where 10 different people can be called John Smith. But the Twitter username, John Smith, that's the one that only one can have. So, so they're... So, so 
So the had to be Italian right below that one. Mm -hmm. It's not verified. What is mm -hmm. that? So if um, if I'm looking for like the original viral sensation version. Uh, I want to go to the most likely to the verified version. They're the ones that are like the official ones that made that original funny meme, that original funny video. These ones, maybe they're trying to copy it. Maybe they're some other kind of account. They're they're not. They didn't go through the process of verification to show that they're like an official representative of this content. So the verification process is something that you would you would initiate mm -hmm. as the yeah, okay, and once we create our account, we'll see we'll see okay. where to do so, that. So it could be right, sorry, hmm? like a dog is barking. How, how to be Italian? Ten fast steps, one blow. It could just be that they didn't go through the process, but they could be still the original owner. They, they could, but most people that care about this internet fame, they want to be the original one. They want to be give me the credit. I'm the one that invented it. So those that are serious about it, they they do this. Right. Those that don't know about this, well, there's then a lot you need to know about YouTube to be a viral hit, and that's one of the things. Those that have the verification also, I don't doubt that those that are verified also get a little bit of a boost in what content shows up. So there's a lot of value to the verification, I would say. OK, so I was going to show here. Uh, below every video, well, below every video, uh, you've got the description, yes, but then that is an active button right there. That's an active link. The name of the, um, of the channel is clickable as well as the, as the icon. So I have the obvious button to subscribe. But if I click on the name of the account, it, it goes to their, their channel, their, the home page of their channel. And in this case, there's a video that plays here, Italian words you've been getting wrong. So you can pin a video to your profile as the very first video people will see. We'll, we'll see how all of this works. But there's a video that sort of like introduces you to the channel popular uploads. Hmm. They haven't uploaded anything in two years. No, sorry, this is popular. Never mind. Not not current. But their most popular video from two years ago was 1.6 million views. From one year ago, 1 million views from two years ago. Oh, and here's a go. Here's an upload. From three weeks ago, uh, here's a, an upload. 8,000 views. From one month ago, 4,000. One month ago, 6,000. So all their videos. This is the home screen. And we have videos, a list of all of the videos in sequential order, just for curiosity. What was their first video? Three years ago. My first video, Inspiration is the Origin of Beautiful Things. 4,000 views. Playlists tab. Let's make some notes on playlists. So on a YouTube channel, so Anatomy, Anatomy, of a YouTube channel home screen videos screen playlists community channels about and search you see there's also a little search icon right there. So home screen, somewhat customizable. <coughs> Everyone that has a YouTube channel looks very, very similar in that, well, there's certain columns and there's certain rows and all of that. 
it's customizable in terms of perhaps what you can move one element to another element and such. Uh, but you also have the top graphic to catch people's attention. You have your videos, screen, all that you've uploaded in chronological order, playlists, grouping, your videos into topics. So under his playlist here, he's got videos related to recipes. He's got seven videos related to recipes. Uh, he's got some videos that appear to be in Italian grouped together. So you can make as many playlists as you want, and you can put a video into as many playlists as you want. Videos are also very help. I mean, playlists are also very helpful for you to be found. So create as many playlists as you want. Put a video into any as many playlists as you want. Use playlists. I would tell you right now that is a big tip that I will tell you that playlists are very valuable for you for several reasons. So because um, uh, all of a topic are grouped so that's easier for your viewers watch this then watch that then then watch this all basically in a sequence they're all grouped together on a topic uh, the way that looks is if I if I look here the recipes they're all right here so I can easily then okay actually I mentioned oh, I want to see this tiramisu so I can jump right to it even though if it was uploaded one year ago, five years ago, all of them grouped into a certain topic, I can quickly jump to what I want. It's all organized in a playlist. Right now I'm looking at spaghetti carbonara. I want to jump to the tiramisu, so jump to the tiramisu. And these will play in sequence. This is video two out of seven. When this one is finished, it will automatically go to the next one, which is lasagna. After a video plays, the next one in the playlist auto plays. So it will automatically go to the next one. That's how one way to break out of like what's coming up next. I put all of mine in a playlist, my stuff will play in the order I've chosen. Instead of someone else's video about uh, bolognese sauce. Uh, yeah. Yes, but then as soon as mine shows up, there's the option um, to continue with the playlist. So I might have been over here on someone else's uh, video, and then yes, if my video then shows up here, uh, this is gonna say that it's it's part of a playlist, and I can then uh, continue watching the the rest of the video. So it is that that you have to first kind of capture them, the viewer, and then they can start to play the next ones in the playlist and such. Um, if if you don't have the playlist, then that's the detriment. Where does it show that it's part of the playlist? Let's see, they put it over here somewhere. It's um just curious because if I get a hold of somebody I like their video. Let's see, did they change this? Um maybe they made it harder now. Either this one's not in a playlist or they did change it. The next one that's coming up, yeah, that's 
going to a different one. Hmm. OK, I need to double check that because if this is part of a, this is part of a playlist, uh, huh, OK, it's here. It's not obvious at all. It's right here. I didn't even, I didn't even notice it. This little info box right here. Clicking there. Uh, then it shows that it, that there's the playlist right there. So, yeah. So that, that's not too helpful. It's really out of the way there. If you if you never notice it, you know, you're just watching it, and then it goes away right there. So, if you put your mouse on it, if you put your mouse on it, that's when you you have that right there, and then there's the playlist. Does it come back at the end of the video? It's always it's always ac accessible to you. You know, if you hover your mouse over it, it will appear. <coughs> he he might not have put it into a, a playlist then. So when you hover over it, do you see the play buttons and then the icon maybe? If it doesn't have the icon, maybe they didn't set it. This um yeah, this this is not as user friendly as it could be, but it should appear. Okay, so let me finish over here. Um, okay, community. This is just another screen where you can add uh, content, sort of vaguely like a blog. You can uh, have a spot where you update content. Notice people start it off and then they kind of fall off because it's more effort to do the actual videos but he wrote a little blog note here eight months ago it hasn't updated in a little bit nine months ago and here's a spot for him to sort of write to the community sort of like write blogs on the community to the community and they can reply back to you 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 can then delete their negative comments and all of that so community is sort of like a blog <coughs> see here community sort of blog channel so this is optional it's usually not that useful for most people but this is sort of like to create what would you call it like a not not multi-level marketing but what do you call it like networking channel is a sort of way to create a network in terms of what other related YouTube channels are we sort of kind of like sharing with each other this channel doesn't feature any other channels, so in this case they're not even using it. But in here what you would do is you would also have links to other channels. The ways you could possibly use this is I have one channel devoted to travel. I have one devoted to cooking. I have one devoted to relationships. And my relationships one is very popular. So I then promote, I cross promote my different channels in this screen. I can also cross promote other people's channels if I want. Notice he's he's not using it, and it's very optional. I don't think there's too much of a value to it. I haven't quite experienced it because you need all of these other connections. And if you're if you're connecting with someone else, you're giving free advertising to someone else, which that may or may not help you. You don't know. Optional linking to other channels or showcasing other channels. about another spot to optimize for search. So you have space to write as much as you want with more keywords, but in general, what is the whole channel about? What would people expect to find on this channel? Hello there, my name is Marco. I'm a creative soul, traveler, dreamer, Italian, living in London, etc. And then there's a spot here to get his email. He put some links here. Click here to subscribe. Click here to go to my Facebook. Click here to go to my Twitter. So just another place to have this information. Joined in 2014, has 5.4 million views. Just another spot to optimize. So we have search here. And search up there those two are very different the search at the very top searches all over YouTube 
this search only searches in this channel. So searching here uh, would only, how do you spell lasagna? 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 OK. So that is then searching only and giving results where he had lasagna in the video. It does not have to be lasagna only in the title. This one says right here, Italian words you've been getting wrong. Lasagna must be somewhere in the description. Bolognese sauce, it's somewhere in the description. Here's a, here's a playlist that appeared with lasagna somewhere in the text. So this search is for people to search within your videos, not all of YouTube. Searches only in your account. Um, I would say, as we as we wind down the lecture, here's your homework. Well, homework in quotes because there's no homework in these classes. But here's your homework. Competitor analysis. Search YouTube for keywords about what your business is and browse a few YouTube channels to see their pro see their their page and videos. That's it. Just look at other accounts. Um, I'm a web designer. I'm going to search the keyword web designer San Diego. Maybe. I'm going to see what I get. Maybe I get results. Maybe I don't. But I'm going to look at a few websites regarding web design. What are they doing? What did they write in there about? How do they make their graphics up here? Do they promote any other channels? What's their most popular video? I'm going to look at some of those videos. Are they screen capture type? Are they um, commercial type? Um, how are they doing their videos? Are they complex? Do they have a lot of sound or edits? Or is the video quality good? That's competitor analysis. Looking at the competition, uh, putting aside uh, your jealousy of the competition, and looking at it uh, in, in, a, uh, in, an object, in an objective way. Is the video good? Does it make sense? How long is it? Uh, I'm surprised people haven't asked yet. People always ask, well, how long should my videos be? And I usually give a, uh, I don't give a direct answer because it depends on various factors, which we'll talk about next time. But look at the comp competition. Uh, one way to answer how long should my video be is look at the competition. If you're, you know, a, a wine, if you're a winery, and I want to make YouTube videos, and you look at the videos of other wineries, and their videos are two minutes long, and I'm making mine ten minutes long. Maybe that's one of the reasons that people don't watch my videos. They're they're too long. Maybe you know people are too busy drinking to watch the video. So, these some of these technology videos. Maybe I'm thinking of making you know two minute long videos, but people want to watch forty minute long videos. As I see the competitor analysis. So competitor analysis sounds fancy, but it's just you know scoping the competition. Checking out what they're doing, spying on the competition, reconnaissance. So that's your unofficial homework, if you would like. By next week, just kind of browse some YouTube channels. Try not to get distracted with funny cat videos. You know, stay on task and look at competitors' videos and see what you glean from it. And next week, what we'll do is we'll create the account and further talk about optimizing the account and keywords and monetization and boosting and all of that. General questions as we, as we end the class. Yes. All right, so I'm going to close that file. I'm going to put the, those notes into the network folder. So these notes that I just wrote, if you want a copy of them, remember you can go into the computer window, into the classroom data 
window classroom data drive Z as in zebra and then inside of Campo Social 3 I got the notes right here 2018-04-06 you can uh, email that to yourself you can print it out I'll turn the printer on in just a moment we have a little bit of time before we wrap up that one and then we'll do it again next week